Hi, my name is Johanna Lundy and I'm the principal horn of the Tucson Symphony. I'm also the horn professor at the University of Arizona. I'm here today to show you a couple details about playing the horn and getting to know the maintenance for your instrument. So let's look at these valves a little bit. The French horn has rotary valves. Now that's going to be different from a trumpet valve. A trumpet is a piston valve, which means it changes the opening of the airways by moving up and down. The rotary valve is going to rotate. And rotary valves are basically, they have to be built to much, much more precise specifications than a piston valve. Pist piston valves have a little more room for error. So these are very sensitive valves, and this is part of the reason why um, French horns uh, can cost a little more money than a trumpet. Also, we're looking at a lot more brass material as well. But um, when we turn around the instrument and look on the back, you're probably going to have string linkage here. Some instruments have mechanical linkage, so if you have that, um, you won't have to worry about the, st the strings, but you will have to do a little extra oiling. So there are a couple places we can oil the valves. Um, we can, and now these are quite clanky. So sometimes they might clank because the little stoppers on the back need to be replaced. We're going to find out if that's the case with this instrument. Sometimes it's just because they need to be oiled. So there are a couple places where we can oil um, the valves. Now for, uh, for you guys, it's fine to just use a piston valve, um, valve oil. So any kind of regular valve oil that you find like Alcas, um, this is a Holton one, so this came with a horn, but it's basically the same weight. It's just a lightweight, um, a lightweight oil. Um, you can easily find it at your uh, local band instrument store. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of oil here, and let me show you exactly where. Really tricky if we can close in on here. So there's a little um, kind of crease here where two parts, two metal parts come together, and that's exactly where I want one drop and only one drop. You don't need too much of this stuff. So we're going to put that there. Okay. And then on the front side, we can take the valve caps off. And it's another way of getting to the same part, which is really uh, what we call the bearing. Um, and it's like a spindle that um, rotates, and that's what holds the valve um, on and rotates it. So be careful with these. You can have them zing off, you know. Um, we don't want that. We don't want them to dense and fall in the instrument, really. Um, so there's some little holes here, and that's where I'm going to put that that um, oil in. And then, if you work the valves already, they're they're definitely getting better with the, with the noise, and they're soaking up the oil, which tells me this was a instrument that needed it. Especially in Arizona, we have a pretty dry climate here, so keeping up with this is important. Um, you probably want to, if you hear clanking, it's definitely time to do this. You don't have to do it every day, but, um, you know, every two weeks would be a good, a good amount of time. So we're going to put those valve caps back on. Okay. And just get those back on there. And again, don't crank it. We don't need to crank anything. Metal parts just don't need to be cranked. If you're noticing that the threading is not going on here, just take take your time to back it out, get it get it on there right, so we're not forcing any parts and damaging um, damaging the instrument. Because like I said, it, it is like a machine, and we want to make sure. Uh, yeah, this one's being a little fussy with me. We want to make sure we don't force any anything here. Mm. Oh, this one's a trouble troublemaker. There we go. Okay. Okay, now, better, better sound. Okay, now the slides. When we pull out a slide, we always wanna push down um, the valve lever for that slide, okay? And the reason is, is there's a compression that's held in these valves, and if we um, move this, there's an air, there's a change in the air pressure, and over time, it's not gonna happen in one time or two times, but you know, you're gonna be maybe borrowing an instrument that you know, people might use for 10 years after you, you try to multiply that by 10, you know, 10 zillion billion times over over 10 years time, and we're going to affect the uh, alignment of the valves inside the casing. So, all right, so we're going to do that. Now, as far as greasing the slides, um, my rule of thumb is you do this when you notice that they don't move smoothly anymore. <laughs> so if you're trying to get your slide on, if 
you don't have enough time to get that slide out in your rest before you have to play again, it's over time to do the, the slide creasing. Okay, so what I like to do, I just grab a paper towel. All right, and we're gonna need our slide grease. And now you can get these um, in, in a little container like this where there's sort of a, a goo that you squeeze out, or there are also ones that come in like a little pot where you sort of scoop it out on your finger. Um, either one's fine, just look for one. You don't wanna get um, a cork grease, that's for woodwinds, but you look for a slide grease is what you're looking for. Um, so first thing I do is I wipe off the grease that's already on here, because we're just going to start new. All right, looking good. And then you don't need that much, because this, these parts are designed to fit very, very flush with each other, right? So I'm just going to put a tiny bit here. I just try to go all the way around um, both of these tubes. And... That should be about all it needs, if you can see that. It's really not, it's really not very much. So we're gonna see. You don't want metal parts scraping against metal parts. So that's why we need to use a slide grease or an oil in the case of the valve. So you can kind of wiggle it in here. Make sure it's getting not just on the outside of this, but the inside of the slide casing. Okay? And then there we go. So if it's moving well, we're in good shape. And you're probably gonna need to grease the uh, main slide more often because this is when you're going to be taking in and out more. Now I'll show you one thing with horn we also need to empty the water occasionally, right? So um, if you hear any sort of clicking sound, yeah this one doesn't have it right now, especially if you play the instrument we're blowing warm air into a cold instrument it's going to make condensation. So we're going to rotate this around, pull this out, all right, and we just empty it if there's any there. Okay, we can also go all the way around and sometimes wiggle the valves, so there might be a little bit that comes out the bell. Make sure you don't get it on your leg. Let me show you a couple cleaning tools that you can use for the horn. So we have a mouthpiece brush. So it's good to clean out your mouthpiece, um, you know, maybe once a week, definitely once every two weeks. The best thing for keeping your mouthpiece clean is to not ever eat or drink or chew gum any time near to when you're going to play this instrument. What I do for myself, I always brush my teeth before I'm going to play, pick up my instrument. Um, otherwise, you're just literally putting really yucky stuff into this long tube. It's not so easy to get things out of a long closed tube like this. So my recommendation for you, if you have band class right after lunch, at least do some water. If you can bring a little mini toothbrush to school and you've got time to do something like that, great. Worst case scenario, this thing's gonna be your new best friend, okay? So you can just get some dish soap. Um, good place to do this is at your kitchen sink. So grab the mouthpiece and your mouthpiece brush, and it's just like a bottle brush. So you sort of, you know, you can see it's kind of cone-shaped here, and you're gonna use hot water, as hot as, as you can handle, and um, just make sure you get any of the gunk out. And again, a little bit of soap, just like one drop. Make sure you get the soap all rinsed out. Of course, you don't wanna have soap. And then uh, make sure that the, uh, the rim of the mouthpiece gets cleaned off too. Okay, so that's mouthpiece brush. Snake is kind of like a mouthpiece brush attached to a long flexible tube. So the best thing to do here for cleaning out the instrument, most of the trouble is gonna come um, between the lead pipe and this first um, slide. So what you can do is once a month, um, go ahead and take your snake and run it through here, well, no mouthpiece, take the mouthpiece out first, but run it through here and take the slide out and it's gonna come out through this tube here. Uh, now when it comes out, so you wanna find a safe place to set this down, right? Because um, you don't wanna have it fall off if, chair or something. So I'm going to set that on this paper towel. It's a good safe place for it. So when this comes out of this tube, there might be some gross gunk on it coming up out of here. So I keep another paper towel ready to kind of cover it up so there's not weird stuff just splashing everywhere. So that's what I do. You run the whole snake through and then the other little end comes out. Same thing, just be careful so you're not getting anything weird coming out. Uh, then it's clean. We've cleaned out most of the trouble stuff and we can put this back in. One more thing I'll show you about is uh, string. So, uh, people say we are not a string instrument, but look, huh? So, we have, um, if you don't have mechanical linkage on the back of your instrument, 
um, it's going to be, um, there are strings involved in this valve system. So as you can see, these strings are tied very tightly and they're what um, hold, hold everything in place so that when we move this um, lever, we turn that motion of the lever into this rotating movement of the valve. It's pretty cool. Um, so if your strings are looking pretty bad, if they're looking thin, if they feel really old and brittle, if you're seeing them, uh, well, frame on the end is okay, but if you're seeing like it fraying in a place that looks like it's about one thread left and then it's going to rip into two pieces, um, it's time to get a new string. So um, I would recommend if you notice something like that, either talk to your band director or take it into an instrument repair shop or if you're renting it, you can take it to the store where you rented it from. They can usually change out the strings for you pretty easily. It's a little tricky to learn how to do it, but eventually you're gonna wanna get some of the string and carry it and keep it in your case. What I used to do, I've got a knot tied here that's sort of like we were halfway. I would then usually cut this to the right length so that it's it's all the right length and ready to go if I should break a string and need to um, rechange change it out, you know, in a concert, I suppose it could happen. It hasn't happened to me, I think, ever. So, but it, can, it you know, things happen. So, one more piece to the puzzle there. And if you are using, um, if you are going to change the strings, you're going to get need to get a teeny tiny screwdriver. So you're going to look at the screws on your instrument. They might be a little different from your neighbor's horn, and you have to find one that fits these just these little tiny baby screws here. We're not going to. Some of them have a screw here, or we won't be adjusting that. It's just these little ones. So, but that's a little more advanced. So if you can get someone else to do it for you, it's just easier that way. Should last for a year or two once you've gotten them tied with nice new string. Uh, I think that's all for now. I hope that this has been helpful for you.